Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our transition chat. This is Ann Kennedy. I'm a transition facilitator for Baltimore County Public Schools. And tonight, our chat will be given by John Shadow, who is an ambassador for the Maryland ABLE account um, program. So he's going to start talking about that. And I will monitor the chat box. If you have questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat and I will make sure that we get them addressed. And at the end of the presentation, we can just unmute ourselves and have a, have a free flowing conversation if you have more questions. Okay, thank you. Are we ready? Yes, you can take it away, John. Thank oh, you. wonderful, thank you, thank you. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you so much for managing these slides for me. Uh, so. We're going to go to another slide. <laughs> we can talk about the revenue code some other time. Uh, so ABLE is the unique program put through by the federal government. So every state can elect to choose to do an ABLE and then improve their ABLE plan. And the whole purpose is this. For us in the disability community, we know that if you have Medicaid, the Medicaid waiver, or SSI, you have a $2,000 limit on what they call resources. Resources means all your money and savings, checking, unprotected trust, investments, all those things at any one moment added together, if it exceeds $2,000, they will stop your SSI and send you a bill. They will stop your Medicaid and your Medicaid waiver, which means you will not be covered until you clean all this up by reducing your money that you have out there and hoping that they will agree with that and take that step. So ABLE was created because that $2,000 limit was not being changed. It was going to be there for who knows how long. So they came up with ABLE, which does more than just get around the $2,000 limit. It actually adds a whole lot of other different things to it. So when you have Maryland ABLE or some other state ABLE program, what you have is a bank account that's FDIC insured, just like standard bank accounts are. Uh, and that bank account, merely by putting your money in the account, if you qualify for the account, means that same money that you would have to spend, you don't have to spend it. You can put it into a Maryland ABLE account. It is now by law, federal and state law, invisible, cannot be counted as yours or your loved ones by Medicaid, the Medicaid waiver, or SSI. So when you have this process, it's about how do you manage your benefits, keep your benefits, and yet still have money coming in, whether it's money from gifts, whether it's money from work and those kinds of things. And ABLE is the one process that you can use for this that's affordable, flexible, easy to use. Uh, there is one other, and that is a special needs trust Special needs trusts are very important, but also very expensive. Uh, and they do not have the same flexibility that ABLE has, but they have other things that ABLE doesn't. So when we're talking about an ABLE account, it takes about uh, 20 minutes online, 24 hours a day. Anytime you can't sleep at 3 a.m. like me, you get up and you can look at the ABLE website. It's MarylandABLE.org. And the website's outstanding. Uh, and if you do it during the day, they will talk to you. They will message you. They're very, very supportive. Uh, and the reason that you go do this is go look at the website. This program is permanent. It's not going anywhere. It's written at the IRS code for the for the federal uh, federal government. So it's a permanent program. But you might be curious about using it and how it might be an advantage to you. So using ABLE is not just about putting your money in there. It's about what else can you get. What else do they have there that makes it more attractive? Well, number one, what's more attractive about it is several states got together and negotiated with banks because their whole point was we don't want to have fees that are out here and just bleeding the money out of people who happen to, to be disabled and need to use ABLE or some other, some other thing like a special needs trust. We don't want to bleed them and make a profit for the bank for the state of Maryland. So ABLE counts do, don't do that. No one is making a profit off of anything. Uh, and this was intended so that the cost of the ABLE account is as low as literally you can get it. Uh, and that it's not there that, okay, I 
didn't have 1200 bucks in my account and have to pay a fee. That doesn't exist in ABLE. ABLE is not built to do that. It doesn't do that. Uh, in addition, you can put up to $2,500 per calendar year into anyone's ABLE account. Uh, get up to a $2,500 tax deduction on your Maryland taxes, assuming you're a Maryland taxpayer. What this means is, and we'll get to this a little bit further, as loved ones, we give money to our family. You can still give that same money to your family uh, if they have an ABLE account, but give it to the ABLE account that's in their name, and then you get a state of Maryland tax deduction up to $2,500 per year per ABLE account. So we can go ahead and move to the next slide. So looking at ABLE, who can qualify for ABLE? And this is changing, and it's going to change very soon uh, to under age 46, but right now under age 26, which means not how old you are, I'm 66, but I could have had a disability that began before my age of 26. That's what's important. Not your current age, but when the disability started. Okay. So when that started before age 26 and you meet the definition of disability, then you can have an ABLE account. All you have to do is go online, get together $25, and then go ahead and create that account. Uh, and so the process of doing the ABLE account is very easy, very straightforward. Uh, and by the way, if you have SSI or SSDI or the variations of SSDI, uh, you don't have to give them anything about your disability. They'll just look it up. All they're looking at is the date of the disability. But if you do not have SSI and SSDI, which is most people, because only about 27% of people get these benefits on the first time through, and many never get these benefits, you can get around that problem. You can go to your medical professional and on the ABLE website, you go to the bottom, it says forms, click forms, and there'll be a medical form there to take to your medical professional. If he or she signs that and says, John Chateau is disabled before age 26 and meets the social security definition of disability, that's all you need to do is send it in. They'll verify it. So you don't have to have SSI or SSDI. I've had had it in the past. So we can move to the next, next slide. So when you create this, even though you may be in charge for your loved one of the account, the account's in that person's name, not your name if you're the parent and managing the account. It's always in their name and it's all their money. Every penny in there belongs to them. So when you set these type of ABLE accounts up, you can either, as a person with a disability, you could run your own ABLE account from A to Z is the only thing in the entire disability world in this country where the person with the disability can be in charge of their own money. So literally nobody else's business. They're running it from A to Z and they're, they're doing what they're going to go do with that account. If that's not a good fit, then you can have someone else that they appoint to be in charge of ABLE for them. This is very important because as we all know, managing money is, is a task. And so sometimes you're just saying, well, I'm just, I'm a spontaneous spender. Other things I might rather have, uh, you know, a parent or a loved one doing that. Uh, and so when you set that up, you can set that up so that you are in charge of the account as power of attorney. One note, if you're a power of attorney in an ABLE account, it doesn't affect power of attorney anywhere else in the world. It's only for ABLE. Now, ABLE calls it a weird name. They call it an ALR, Authorized Legal Representative. That's because every state has different state laws on everything from guardianship to power of attorney. So they came up with their own name. But remember, if your power of attorney in ABLE doesn't extend anything else, doesn't invalidate anything else going on in your world, it's just within ABLE, which means you'd be in charge of that account on behalf of your loved one. But because this is that person's account, they can fire you. So if you're not, if, if my son came to me and says, dad, I want, I want 150 CC motorcycle, uh, just cause. And I just smile at him and say, I love you, son. You're not getting that. He could literally come up and say, well, dad, I'm appointing mom to this account. She's agreed to do that motorcycle. 
And of course, obviously, I'm just being funny about it, but but that's exactly what happened because it's their account. This is all about empowering the person with disability whose name's on the account to give them independence, allow them to save and invest money because money is choices and money is power. And that's what this is all about, giving independence to people so people don't have to spend their money constantly to stay under the $2,000 limit. So we can switch to another slide. Yeah, we're going to skip that slide. <laughs> so, so when you set up an ABLE account, assuming you qualify, all you need is $25 to open the account. And it's still your money. It's not their money. Uh, the total cost, the total cost for an annual cash account, FDIC insured for an entire calendar year, $35, no fees. $35, no fees. You only have to keep 10 in it to keep it open. So when you create an ABLE, it's all about low cost. So the, the, the actual ABLE account is not draining your money. If you signed up now, you wouldn't pay 35 for the rest of the year. They prorated by quarter. So it'd be less than that. So getting into an ABLE account is easy. It's the cheapest thing going. That's why they negotiated this so that no one makes any money out of the process. So when you do this and you put this money in ABLE uh, and you're setting it up, what they're going to ask you is, do you want to connect it to outside checking accounts to transfer the money from ABLE to another account? I think they go to like 11 accounts. So you can do all kinds of different things about breaking the money up and however you want to go do that. And that's one way that you can move money from ABLE out to use it. It's just by transferring it to another bank account. If you do it with an ACH bank account, which is bank to bank transfer, there's no cost. You also can have them send a check. You also can put it into what's called a cash card. Cash card is a visa but it's only cash, which means no credit, no debit. You can't get in credit trouble. You can't get in debit trouble by accessing everything in your account. It's only by what the holder of the account puts on that card. So if my son came to me and says, Dad, I'm going to go out with my friends and go buy clothes or something like that. I said, OK, I'm putting 100 bucks on your, your uh, Visa Able account. Then he can use it anywhere Visa is taken, just like that. It gives. It's also about dignity and independence. He doesn't have to ask dad and mom for money every time he's out doing something or wants to go do something. You literally can put it on the card. And there is a small fee with the card, but it's far lower than any card fee that's out there. Um, so those are the ways you move money out. The way you move money in is you can mail them a check. Uh, you, can, you can transfer it from bank to bank into that account. All that's very, very easy. So when you're putting money in ABLE, there is a limit to how much you can actually put in the ABLE account per calendar year. Thank you. And I'm going to get to your question in just a moment. So when you're doing this with the ABLE account, you can put up to $18,000 in an ABLE account per calendar year. That $18,000 is a contribution limit, not a balance of the account. So what happens if I put in over the year, you could put in $35 or $50. You don't have to put any more than that in there. But if you do get that 18,000, suppose you're over by a little bit because an aunt was nice enough and sent 25 bucks to the account. There's no fee for that. They're just going to mail you back to $25 and say, hold it until January 1st and put it in. So there's no fee for that. Okay. So the $18,000 limit is extremely important because you can, under certain conditions, put in more than 18,000, as you see on the slide. You go up to 14,580 if the person's working under certain conditions. Why did they put that in there? Because many people who are disabled are in recession jobs. If they have a recession, that job may go away. But also, they often don't have any type of retirement mechanism for you to put money aside. So they added that for people who are working. So they actually put more in per year to make up for not having that type of retirement support in their job. So some folks here have, have uh, loved ones who are receiving SSI or they themselves are receiving SSI. In an agreement with Social Security, when they created ABLE, they will allow a person with SSI and an ABLE account 
to have up to $100,000 in that account, and it will not affect the resource limit on SSI, which is $2,000, which means you can just, you can invest that money. You can just get capital gains. You can get interest off that money. You can give money every year to it and up to $100,000, no effect whatsoever on SSI, by the way, on Medicaid either. So what happens after that? Anything after that, which they're not going to close the account. You can continue putting money in the account, but that money counts towards that $2,000 limit that anything is after 100000 if you have SSI. If you do not have SSI and you have no Social Security benefit or you have a benefit called SSDI or a little group of benefits with it, it's half a million dollars. So it lets you do a lot of things. It lets you do a lot of things in terms of how much money I can put away, not worry about that issue. We can go to the next slide. So the contributions that they're talking about uh, is about unemployment benefits and things of that nature. If you have questions about that, um, I'm also certified by Social Security as a disability analyst. I don't work for them, but I work with Social Security disability benefits and work all the time. You can reach me at the Ark Montgomery County. And it's John at Ark Montgomery County. And I'm there on the website. Uh, and then you can contact me. We'll talk about more details about unemployment and things like that. We can go to the next slide. So this is very, very important. So you can roll over money from a 529 into ABLE. So if you're saving for the college fund and getting tax breaks there, you could also have an ABLE account and get tax breaks there. And if you're not using all that money from the 529, you can roll it over into ABLE subject to that $18,000 per year contribution limit. So it allows people to be more flexible with their money to move back forward. And many people talk to me about this. And the answer is, Yes, as long as you're within the the, uh, the contribution limit per year. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So there's a variety of investment options. So if you wish to invest, and you do not have to, you can have a cash account for $35 a year, which has interest, but you can also choose investments or a cash account and investments if you simply decide this is a good fit. So if you go do this, this explains that there's four different investment options. Uh, and they have, they do have fees associated with them, but they're extremely low. They're negotiated. Uh, and someday, S-U-M-D-A-Y is the investment arm of ABLE. And they will give you a portfolio, just like any investment you're looking at. You can talk to them about the investments and what is chosen, what's out there, and those type of things as well. So we can go to the next slide. So who can give to a, an ABLE account? The answer is anybody anywhere, anytime. Unlike a special needs trust, which are literally structured so that can only be your money or only not your money, um, ABLE can take money from anyone, even strangers. It doesn't matter. You can take money from any source. You can run a fundraiser in your neighborhood for someone's ABLE account for them to go buy a computer, buy their first condo, things like that. You can do all those different things, which is really powerful. And they set this up simply because they want you to have money. And the more easier it is for people to give you money from whatever reason, that's a wonderful thing. So money can come from literally any source. So we can go to the next slide. So qualified disability expenses. Suppose you qualify, your disability started before age 26 and you qualify under the IRS definition of disability. You can spend money from the ABLE account only for the person whose name's on the account. Very important. If you don't, you may be subject to up a 10% uh, tax penalty for that amount that was spent on somebody else. So you cannot spend that for anyone else at any time, not even for a gift or a loan. It's only for the person whose name's on the account. Um, and like I say, if you do it or do it by mistake, it's going to be a 10% tax penalty of the amount that went out to a person who wasn't qualified. Uh, so only for them. Uh, that means they can spend it on, and this list you see here is in no way complete. There is no complete list. Because the issue with ABLE is you can give or spend that money for that person or the person can spend it for themselves for anything that's to in their best interest, in their best interest except gambling. 
You cannot buy lottery tickets with it. You can't go out there and say, oh, wow, I'm going to put $10,000 over here because I'm betting on the Preakness. You can't do that. But other than that, you're spending it only on that person and only in their best interest. Let me tell you something that's important to remember. Many people will use this for vacations, for weddings. If your brother's getting married in California, if you're in charge of the account and you determine that's in your best interest, you can go do that. But the person who's in charge of the account, whether it's a person with a disability or maybe a loved one, they're making that decision. Abel is not telling you what they're not sitting out there and saying, we're looking at your books. We're telling you, you shouldn't have spent that. Shouldn't have spent that for the, the wedding. They're not telling you that. That's not what they do. The process here is you as suppose a parent or a loved one, the person like I talked about the, the, the uh, motorcycle, my son asking for a motorcycle earlier, you just say no. Because if you're charging the account on their behalf, your answer is the answer. So you don't have to do what anybody else is doing with Abel. You choose what's a fit for you and your loved one if you're in charge of their account. And they'll choose that too if they're in charge of the account themselves. Okay, so you don't have to go do anything that anybody else is doing. But many people do use it for vacation. They'll use it for medical expenses, college costs. They'll use it to buy a computer. Even if a computer is not disability related, they'll go out to a variety of different kinds of things like that. So it's very flexible long as it's only spent for that person and their best interests. We can go to the next slide. So as I said earlier, you can link these to outside checking accounts and do an either what they call the ACH bank transfer, bank to bank, no cost. Uh, they do not take uh, credit card transactions because Maryland is not going to pay that fee. So no one's paying that fee. That's why you do a bank transfer, you use a check, those kinds of things. And the prepaid card, is, as is mentioned here on the slide, Again, that's a Visa card, it's not debit, not credit. If I put $100 on there for my son and his bill costs 120, he better have 20 in his pocket because that, that ABLE card is only paying 100. But since it's Visa, he can use it freely anywhere Visa is used. Next slide, please. Oh, this is great. So I get excited about this. So you can set up, when you set up an, uh, an ABLE account, you can set up something called a gifting page gifting page. Why do you want to do that? Because anyone could give money to an ABLE account, which means I as a parent may give, I don't know, 150 bucks to my son um, each month for incidental costs. If I give him that money through ABLE, even as his parent, I get a small tax deduction. If I pay Maryland taxes up to $2,500 a year, $2,500 per year per ABLE account. So if he has a sister who has an ABLE account. I have the same thing for them. If it's a married couple giving now, it's $5,000 per year, up to $5,000. So gift pages mean if you have an aunt or a neighbor or somebody who's sending money for a ho birthday, holiday, whatever it is, or just giving you money towards you know play or, or a computer you need or something, they can go right to the gift page, put it in there, print out the gift page, use it on their Maryland taxes. And you don't have to deduct in order to get the benefit. It's before deducting. So it's a line item on the Maryland taxes. There's also a federal tax uh, benefit for donating to an ABLE account. But it literally is before, you know, I can't itemize every year. So it allows me to still get a break for giving to my son's ABLE account. With, uh, and I get that tax benefit. It's not huge, not dollar for dollar, but it, it makes a difference. And I can go do that. It's also encouraging anybody to enrich your loved one or yourself by giving money to that. And so that's that's all about what the spirit of Abel's about. Um, and we can move to the next slide. So can you direct deposit things into Abel? Yes, you can. You can direct deposit a paycheck, social security check, all those kinds of things. But let me give you a warning. Now, I'm giving you a warning as a disability analyst certified by social security. This is not an ABLE warning. This is a John Chateau benefit warning. If you or your loved one is getting SSDI or SSI or something like that from Social Security, a disability cash benefit, I do not recommend direct deposit into an ABLE account. And this is why. Social Security is really good at protecting people's money. So suppose you hit that $18,000 limit per calendar year 
but there's still one more Social Security check to come. Social Security will get that little rejection electronically from ABLE because ABLE will not accept the money after the $18,000 contribution limit. So this is what's probably going to happen. In fact, I can tell you this is what's going to happen. They're going to stop all payments until you and whoever has the disability on the account comes in person, brings your ID, proves you're not dead, proves you're not lying or stealing anything. And then you have to convince them to restart it. Why spend six hours in the Social Security office? And who knows how many phone calls to do that? So I don't suggest direct deposit of Social Security because you might get that problem. They, in their protection of, of that, that person, they will stop all payments. You'll have to go in. It's just a huge amount of work. So my answer is you may not want to do that. Because you may not want to up and run up against sick who has had that time or who just wants to spend six hours in an office. So just keep that in mind. You can still do it, but I'm just, I don't recommend that. Uh, so the ABLE fee is $35 for an entire year prorated. Um, and then the, the investments and things like that, you go and you look at the someday in the portfolio. By the way, the stocks and bonds that are chosen by ABLE are exactly the same as the 529 college fund. And we can go to another slide. I can go to another slide. So everything about the ABLE account, every single detail is in the program booklet, everything. So it's all available online, everything about ABLE. Uh, and so when you go do this, if you ever have questions that are a deep dive, that's where you want to go. You can get that booklet uh, right there online and, and take a look at it. So that's a very over top top overview of ABLE to give you some feeling about the program. And I know you have lots of questions, so I'm ready for the questions if you're ready. So I'm just going to go run down the questions in the chat box, okay? Sure, sure. Um, and if anybody else wants to um, unmute themselves and clarify more about what they meant by the question, please feel free to do that. So is that new to is that new to be able to send in the physician's form acknowledging that there is a disability? Last year or the year before we were told we needed to hold on to the form. Oh, the, uh, the form has been online and, and one way to do this without having social security benefits for a long time. Um, I don't know if they told you to hold on to the form or to send the form in. They may have told you we don't need that unless we ask for it. Uh, that's possible too. But if you already have a um, social security disability income or SSI. No, 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 no. Um, Don't need to do that. Right. That's that's a way for people who do not have social security benefits. Okay. So that disability has not been established. So that's why you use that form. Right. Oh. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the one that asked that question. I'm Robin. I think I was told at one of these presentations last year or the year before, <laughs> as I said, that ABLE is not going to ask for that is not necessarily going to ask for that form. And I didn't think that there was any place to like attach that form to the account should able ask for that form. Are you saying now that we can send that form into able? Yeah, you, you can if you want, but if they haven't set a need for it, then you don't need to send it in. Uh, but, but I might lose it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You can always mail it to them. Okay. Just, just mail it to them. Make sure you have that person's account and name, uh, account number and name on that form okay. or on a cover letter so they know where to put it. But yeah, you're worried about it, send it on in. They'll just add it to the file. And uh, and if they get it and send it back to you, it's because they, they scanned it in uh, okay. and they have it on record. So yeah, you're right, by the way, as a certified disability analyst by Social Security, you're doing the right thing, which is get yourself a plastic tub, throw every single piece of paper from Social Security ever in there for disability benefits like SSI, SSDI. And if you have Medicaid or Medicaid waiver, just throw them in. You don't even have to file them, but you want to have them there. So if something ever happens and things do happen, you have a source to go in and dig through to find something. So it's a good idea to keep it somewhere. Absolutely. All right. And then Robin, your other question about the ALR. Um, can an individual have an ALR? even if they don't have a guardian and what happens if your child turns 18 or when they turn 18? Yeah. As a minor, automatically a parent is their ALR, which means power of attorney. Okay. 
the ALR is just a weird name they came up with because every state has different rules and names uh, for how these things are done. It doesn't change a guardianship or a power of attorney outside of ABLE. It's only within ABLE. So, so it, ABLE is a standalone financial program. It's not connected to Social Security or Medicaid or any of those benefits, but it's out there. And, and the process with ABLE is that when you have this, when you have all this together uh, uh, for able, you're you're just available to go do all those different things. So throw, you know, keep those things and, and store those things so that you don't lose track of anything that you've got going. And I'm not sure I answered your question. Would so, you ask ask that I, again? Yeah, I'll ask my question again. So my, my situation is that my son turned 18 recently. Oh so yes, I had, uh. an, I had an able account for him. I was the a l a l r now that he's 18 i still don't think that he's able to manage his money he yep fits the description what do i need to do great question nothing so it there's no change at age 18 except he will be getting a letter saying if he wants to he can be in charge of his own account uh but nothing is going to change with able they're not automatically going to change anything whatsoever so the process is many people find it appropriate, as does the person who has the ABLE account, for a trusted loved one to be in, in charge of that account. That account doesn't change, doesn't assume anything, but that person would be notified that they could appoint somebody, that they could do it themselves, and that kind of thing. But they will not automatically change anything and change that account. They will communicate so that that person knows, okay, now I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. I could be in charge of it myself. I could have my parent be in charge, someone I trust, uh, but they won't automatically like close the account or anything like that. Okay. Do you have any idea how long before that letter comes out? I do not know. That's a good question. I do not know. Um, and I've never had anyone ask me that question. So very good. <laughs> I got to <laughs> talk to hundreds of people every, every month. Uh, I do not know. You can shoot them an email or shoot them a text or something like that and ask, you know, are we getting a letter about this? How will we be informed? Okay. You know, uh, or can you just go through the procedure? You know, what happens? And just ask them for clarification if you like. Okay. Uh, the next two questions are mine too. If okay. that works, Anne. Sure. Of course, you go right ahead. <laughs> So the the um, cash card, how much was that? There's a small fee to the cash card. Uh, you need to look that up online. I don't have that in front of me at the moment, but it's below the cash card fee for any bank in the country. Uh, and uh, it's very low, but I just don't have that figure in front of me. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll double check. Um, all right. And then the last time I had looked, there really aren't controls that you can put on it as long it's like where that money, that cash can go. There aren't the controls, but um, all right. And then my last question is you talked about being able to roll over money from a 529. Can you roll over from a prepaid college fund or is it just the investment accounts? Do you know? I do not know. You'll directly ask them that question. Uh, I know the 529s move over. I don't know if the other you know, financial instruments also qualify. They're, they may or not, may not even be in the same tax status. I don't know. But yeah, definitely ask them that question. Uh, that's not something that I, I normally deal with. Okay. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Um, Great questions though, Robin. Yeah, these, these are Thank fantastic God. questions. Yeah. Um, and just for my um, clarification, the prepaid card, you don't have to put every cent of your ABLE account on that card, right? You put as much as you want your loved one to try to handle right great and great question yeah yeah great Anne. that's a great question absolutely not you put only what you want that person to be able to spend from the card so it doesn't have all the money in the account on purpose it takes an actual transfer of money to get onto that card so that can't be done accidentally to suddenly somebody has fifteen thousand dollars on the card and they're going to go out and have fun and <laughs> and but the process is you put only on there what you want them to spend. They cannot exceed that amount. It is impossible to exceed that amount. Great. Anybody else have thoughts or questions? Um, John, I'd like to put your, um, or you could put your email address in the chat box. I know you gave it before, but just 
If people want to see it written down, that would be great. Sure. If you want people to contact you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Sure. Okay. I have another question. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> Can the ABLE accounts be tied to Cash App? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, there's a limit on what it can be tied to. You can transfer money into it. You can transfer money out of it. But the only way I know you transfer money out of it is by check, is by the cash card, or transferring it to an outside bank account. That's the only ones I'm aware of. I know there's a lot of different apps out there, but nothing in the, in the, in the uh, ABLE literature refers to that. All right. Good. <laughs> Can a person with an ABLE account set up a GoFundMe and have people um, donate to right to their ABLE? Sure. Okay. Sure. A anything can come in from outside. I see. Okay. Um, John, what happens if the, the young adult loses their card or it's stolen? Um, what What's the protocol for that? It's the same thing with any credit card account you have, you'd contact the, the service number on that card about that. And then uh, they would disable that card. A the able people that run the program aren't those people that do that. Okay. So it'd be directly to the bank, which authorizes that card. Uh, and uh, and then you do the same thing if you had a loss or a stolen one for anything else. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And um, I know that you could open up an a any able account anywhere, right? You don't have to open up a Maryland ABLE account. So um, most states have ABLE accounts, not all. Uh, some of the states require you to be a resident of the state, but most do not. And that's a great question because you can have a Maryland ABLE and you can live in Florida, you know, Washington State, Hawaii, doesn't matter. Maryland allows you to do that. You don't get the Maryland state tax deduction for contributions unless you're paying Maryland taxes, but you don't have to switch that. But on the other hand, suppose you don't like the stocks and bonds for investments that Maryland ABLE has, but you like the ones that are in California. Well, California may let you have an account even if you're not living there, and then you just shop for the best investments that you feel comfortable with. So some of these things are able to move from state to state. It's important to remember that you can only have one ABLE account at one time for a person. So you can't have three or four ABLE accounts for the same person, only one. But guess what? You just transfer it from one to the other. It's very, usually just a form. It's very easy. Okay. But if you have a California ABLE account, but you live in Maryland, you're not going to get any nope. tax incentives, right? right? Yeah, right. Okay. Well, I've said this before, and I will say it now that I think ABLE is one of the best programs that have come around for people with disabilities to really improve their lives in we've had, you know, really in a long, long time. And then there's John's um, contact information if anybody wants to take that down. Um, do we have any more questions tonight? This is such great information. So this recording um, of this presentation will be on the, Depart uh, the Department of Special Ed website under transition resources. Um, and you can access it there um, in a few days when, when our tech person gets it up there. And we'll also put this, these slides um, on there too. So you can look at them later. You can tell your friends to come and look at them. Um, it'll be there for you. So John, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for, Thank you. for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Take Thank care you. now. Thank you.